The Smiling Faces of Pakistan. Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Ji ayanu. Pakhair ragale. Ni hao. To nishum me wash male. Oh, hi, Abdul Zaymus. Guten Morgen. Hi, hugs and hellos. And a very amazing khush amadi to everybody who's tuned into PT1 and are watching World This Morning alongside Shazad Khan. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. The day today is Tuesday. If I'm not wrong, well, I cannot be wrong because yesterday it was Monday. Well, certainly, ladies and gentlemen, it's always a pleasure when we get your feedback. And quite a lot of people have been writing to us about you know, the type of programs we have been doing. Yesterday we had Khamaj uh, with us and it was a what a wonderful, fabulous uh, band it was and we had a great time and quite a lot of people are already asking about them over the internet as well. And today it's uh, 1st of August and uh, I hope everybody pretty much is excited about that they are going to get paid 1st of August. Other than that, it's the month of our independence as well. 70 years to Pakistan's independence and many more to come, inshallah. But now, ladies and gentlemen, to get started with the show, I think, first of all, what we need to do is let's take a look around what's going on in the world. Top stories coming up. National Assembly will elect new leader of House today. Six candidates, including Shahid Khakan Abbasi of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, are in fray to contest elections. Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa says Pakistan and China are facing common challenges which can be defeated through joint efforts. Pakistan National Council of Arts announces month-long programs to commemorate 70th Independence Day of Pakistan with all fervor. England beat South Africa by 239 runs in third cricket test at Oval, taking a 2-1 lead in four-match series. And Met Office predicts more run, rains at scattered places in upper parts of country during next 24 hours. Be careful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is what's going on around in the world and within Pakistan. But time now to move on towards our public service message, which is definitely going to be in line with what we are discussing today. Okay, so the public service message is a very simple one. Since we have evolved with technology, we all know that kids these days have got their tablets, iPhones, whatnot. So what, what they do is that we have a global village, first of all, which is the world itself now. And we call it a global village because of the fact that everybody can communicate with anybody throughout or across the globe. So it doesn't really matter where you are, you can talk to them and it may feel like as if you're talking to them in person as well. But this public service message, I think, is for parents who are out there because it is very hard to get parental guidance over the internet or the parents do not really know how to use these tablets or these high-tech devices. So my point over here is, since we are discussing cyber harassment and cyber bullying on the show today, so the point over here is that if parents are going to be a bit more cautious about what their kids are up to over the internet, and there's very simple formula for that. That is, check the history of the browser, check all, all the content which they have been watching, go click on it, and then you will know what your kid is up to. For example, even kids these days, they watch Spider-Man, Superman, and what not over all of these tablets to just pass their time. But half of the time, these, the Spider-Man or the Superman or the Batman, even though they are heroes, they are legends, what not, but they're fighting. So what happens is that the kid takes this uh, kind of impersonation that, okay, what I need to do is that I need to follow Batman or Superman, start jumping off the shelf and what not, and can break a knee or shoulder as well. So be very careful what they're watching. There's very 
other than that there's educative stuff which is available on the internet too as well there are cartoons which educate children they, they tell you they teach you about colors they teach you about numbers they teach you about so many other things so the content is obviously your choice but the parents need to be very careful who they are talking to these days we have online games for example these days the one which is very famous is ludo so now what happens is ludo is that you know you play with other people over the internet they might be somewhere else and then they can have a chat box small chat box on the left corner they can talk to them so you should always know who your kid is talking to or who your daughter is talking to and what are they up to and i think the best solution to this is having confidence in your kids so that they can come back and talk to you that this is what happened so this is what our public service message is and i've already given you you know what we are discussing today so it's cyber harassment and cyber bullying but before we get into that there's one more thing which is very interesting and that is so the public schools were supposed to open on the 7th or the 8th of august but eventually the government decided that the schools will be open on 15th of august not before or prior to that because it's going to be 14th of august and everybody loves to celebrate and to get into that zeal and fervor what we need to do is that we need to get started with one of our amazing national songs which is coming up for you now so that we embrace this independence and freedom uh, because this is what we enjoy over here in pakistan and this is what these 70 years has been all about the right to self determination so let's go let's get in the zone let's take a listen Yes, Janoon se aur ish se milti hai azadi and that's how we got it and there was quite a lot of sacrifices out there as well but ladies and gentlemen we I think finally I'm in the zone to take off to be prepared for 14th of August well there's going to be quite a lot of patakhas mithaiyan dhol and what not because it is a day of celebration and the entire nation gets together but now moving on to what we were talking earlier so today our topic is cyber harassment cyber bullying now when we talk about cyber harassment or cyber bullying what is it this is the first question which everybody gets in their head and that is cyber bullying is when you use electronic devices or medium to probably blackmail somebody uh, to spread rumors about them to post pictures without their consent which they think shouldn't be over the internet well ladies are very cautious about it because sometimes they wear makeup sometimes they're not and then uh, blackmailing companies and you keep on doing that again and again and over and over and there are different types of it and there are different implications on children adults and whoever is using the internet or whoever it is happening to for example celebrities these days or the president of the united states of america is actually uh, subject to um, i i think it is happening to them most uh, all across the globe as well for example even if you pick up anybody else's tweet or what rihanna said to somebody else or what our local celebrities are doing and then people post their or what they do is they imitate them and then they post their pictures they screenshot the picture which is a normal picture for example they go to photoshop pick up my head put it on some other picture maybe a beggar or what not and that's how they do it so it's all false news as well and then there are certain implications we'll talk about these implications what happens to your personality and the traits you have eventually when you go through such a phase where there are people blackmailing you for different stuff for example somebody can say i've got your personal pictures which i'm going to use for probably defaming you and then they ask for money there can be ransom but there's no physical harm in it so this is the brief uh, explanation of what cyber bullying or cyber harassment is but we have, we do have some apt guests over here 
uh, with whom we'll be talking about what cyber harassment is and what cyber bullying is and what types of cyber harassment and bullying are out there. So on my right hand side, ladies and gentlemen, we have been joined by a clinical psychologist. She's none other than Ms. Ruma Shahid. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Um, thank you for having me. Thank I'm you good. very much for coming over. It's a pleasure. And alongside Ms. Ruma Shahid, we have got another clinical psychologist, and his name is Mr. Adil Ali. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Walaikum as Welcome back. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. So I think I'm going to get started with Adil over here. So Adil, what is clinical, oh, in fact, <laughs> <laughs> okay, have a cyber harassment and cyber bullying. Okay, so cyber harassment, basically it's uh, any form of unwanted or unwelcomed kind of thoughts, uh, unwelcome kind of messages yeah. uh, that is sent from someone and uh, uh, again, the person who is receiving them is not wanting it, not okay. liking it, but he's been, he or she has been receiving those messages or that kind of advancements from the, from the person who is basically doing this. All right. And, and then what, uh, do we have some different types of harassments or bullying over the internet as well? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. So there are many different kinds of cyber stalking, so the cyber harassment. So first of all, uh, first of all, there is something called hate speech. Okay, hate, hate speech. speech. That's very common on the internet. You go on the internet, people talk about different things. People talk about use bad words, abusive language. Yeah. Uh, you know that app called Rudastar. I was playing with my cousin the other day, and uh, uh, the, the, there was some. Two we were joined by two strangers yeah. on that app, and. Uh, you know what happened that that man there he, he passed some very inappropriate comments on the game and uh, we had to like block that user from there so that that happens all over the internet it happens with Nawaz Sharif it happens with everyone else on yeah. the, everyone so that's going on and it's uh, obviously very much alarming so that's one kind of yeah. one kind of cyber harassment and then we've got uh, cyber bullying okay uh, bullying someone or you know some uh, kind of irritating someone annoying someone or uh, blackmailing someone on the internet and uh, then, then also people post pictures and videos of, of, many of different individuals online without their consent. So they share explicit photos and videos. That's happening. That's, these are the controversies happening all over the world. But so you know, there's one more thing which I need to ask people. That is, why do you even take explicit pictures? Yeah, come on. And if you have taken some explicit pictures, why are you even sharing them with somebody? Please don't do that. I mean, obviously, anybody can make a mistake. And that, that is a mistake which eventually comes right in front of your face right in the face in fact and then you are like man what to do and but for all those people who are out there we do have a cyber bill and then uh, people can be protected upon all of those uh, you know whatever conditions we have within the cyber bill so please make sure that you are aware of what your rights are for example if you are uh, if you are being annoyed by somebody somebody's posting your pictures go ahead take a read in the cyber bill you know and you will know that what you can possibly do to that particular person and FIA will help you in that terms as well so, Ruma, do you have any other definition or explanation of what cyberbullying is or what uh, what goes around, comes yeah, around type of thing? Yeah, just adding on to um, some more types. Yeah. So, basically, uh, when there is like a threat to your personal security yeah. and you feel uncomfortable about someone who is uh, regularly stalking you and you actually feel um, threatened about yeah. it, then that that's uh, when harassment occurs. Yeah. And um, to but be it's very not a physical honest, threat, though. It's not, but that's uh, what the intent is at no. the back of the, their head, of the harasser's head. And um, there are so many people, especially women, who face this every day. But what they don't know about is that one way or the other they are being harassed. Yeah. And, um, and do, how often do you even get to hear about p women being harassed on the Internet? Not, not very often because nobody reports it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and talking about hate speech, for example, we, we, we do have examples over here within Pakistan that people have actually been murdered. And then this, uh, we do have this uh, Fahad Malik, Barista Fahad Malik's case as well. And it mm -hmm. was all about commenting on somebody else's profile. And this other guy was actually like, why did you comment on my friend's profile? Well, it was a girlfriend thing, but it was, okay, let me put it like this. And then eventually they met. In a police station, they said, okay, you know, everything's fine. Nothing's going to happen. As soon as they step out of the police station, da 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 yeah. And the innocent soul died. And he was just there to make sure that nobody's going to fight. But so this is what can go wrong with all our children. Please make sure that you keep an eye on them as well. But look, I want to start my conversation with the point of view of a, of a harass, harasser's mindset. Now, for example, for somebody... Uh, to harass somebody, what does it take? What do they think? And what goes around in their head that they are actually supposed to do that? 
does that really mean that the subject in the first place did something to the harasser's head as well? Uh, so let, let's get started from there. Okay, Who, so who's going to answer? Uh, let me. Sure. I think not necessarily it, uh, the, the subject, the, the victim actually doesn't have to do anything wrong okay. to, to become the victim actually. Okay. It's something going on in the harasser's head. Okay. The problem is there in the harasser's head. Uh, okay, I let's for, for a minute okay. think that we all are harassers, God forbid. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so, so why am I going to do it? This is one thing I'm going to think. You're going to think the same and you're going to think the mm -hmm. same. Let's, let's give each other 30 seconds and let's talk about that. Okay, so the time starts now. Think if you, God forbid, were a harasser, why would you do it? What would be your motive behind it? Let me think. Okay, I think I've, I've got it in my head. Have you got it in yep, your head? I did. You okay. got your head? Yeah. Okay. Let's so I think I'm going to start because eventually <laughs> uh, this can happen that, for example, whatever I thought he might have thought of or she might have thought of. So if I'm going to harass, God forbid, somebody, I think I'm going to do it if they've done something bad to me in my childhood years. And if I've got my hands on that person on Facebook or Twitter, or wherever, I'm going to bash him out. I'm like, dude, this guy used to bully me and, you know, look at him, what he's doing now and so on and so on. Why, why are you going to do it? So I think I am because I've been bound in a lot of social norms. I live in a society where I can't uh, openly express my thoughts, express my feelings, or those unwanted or unapproved, That's exactly the unapproved same thoughts. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. because because I can't express them openly in an in a society yeah. on an internet where, where it offers me an anonymity, I, yeah. I can do whatever I want to because okay. that's where I do it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. What <laughs> about you? Yeah. What about you? Oh dear, that's a hard one. Uh, calling me a harasser at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, like. Um, whenever I want to take off my fake mask and persona that we all carry in front of people. Um, and, you know, just be yourself for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> be maybe. yourself <laughs> for a minute. I don't, know, I don't think no, that you, this is like. the best thing to see on television to be yourself. As I mean, no, honestly, like, uh, just think about it for a minute. Don't we all just carry this persona in fr like in front of people and, like, be all good and perfect in front of people and, you know, have this perfect image that, okay, this is what we want to be and this is what we need to show the world about us. Yeah, exactly. But from that's the what side. people use social media. There you go. Th that's yeah. Because that's where they get approval from. Mm -hmm. That's where they get approval. And that's approvals. the only platform they can do it because otherwise they're so weak to do it in person. You know, <laughs> it takes them years and years of courage. Because I, as a kid, was a very uh, much mellow, very dramatic, mm -hmm. you know, just being, uh, sitting right in front of the teacher and, you know, yes, ma'am, and that type of kid. And <laughs> kid would come and bang me on my head. I was like, man, why are you even doing this to me? <laughs> and uh, you cannot, act, act, actually, you cannot even say that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're so scared of those big guys, man, who yeah. have actually failed two grades and then now they're studying with you. You're like, man, they do not even belong to our class. Why are they still in our class? So see, that can be a motive. <laughs> but the, the thing which you said was very interesting that since we are not, at times we do have thoughts which are not socially acceptable, but we do want to do it. Uh, let's see what happens, you know. Let's and so we do it where we do not have our, uh, any of the family members because obviously on Facebook, Instagram, you do not add your father, mother or people uh -huh. like that. <laughs> and then so you keep on doing what uh -huh. you want to do. So, so these can be some reasons why people do it. But now for somebody who's actually going through or he's been a subject from the uh, or he's been a victim what do they think when it starts happening eventually and it all starts happening eventually so yeah absolutely it does well first of all there are not many people who would even share this information with anyone exactly. because of the stigmas and the stereotypes attached to it um, some people would just be like oh I'm quiet because of my family honor I don't want to just it's, it's gonna be disrespectful for my family and that's why I'm quiet not showing any concerns but again, that would lead to so many other things. You know, stand up for yourself. Don't stay quiet and don't get the blame on yourself. Like, don't let anyone tell you that, oh, why did you even put your pictures on the Facebook on, on Facebook yeah. in the first place? I mean, it's a free network, go use it. You have a choice to do that. I mean, we do have a choice, but then uh, other than that, what happens is when you keep on thinking about all of those pictures going viral over the internet, and you were an accomplice to that thing, may them be explicit pictures, may them be anything which you did and you were being recorded by somebody else, I don't think that you have a way out. In fact, what happens is that you end up being stressed. So let's start from stress this, or anxiety. This is going to be the first part. 
So what's going to happen to our personality if we are going to be under stress and anxiety for a longer period of time? Yes, Adil, let's, let's get started. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so again, this stress and all of this, uh, this blackmailing, or if, if you happen to, uh, to get under someone who is blackmailing us, who is using our pictures, posting our videos online, uh, again, this could be very dangerous. Yes. This, could, this has many bad psychological impacts, uh, depression, anxiety, even post-traumatic stress disorder. So that's something if, if a trauma happens, for example, a very bad video Video is posted online and it goes viral. You don't even, you can't even Which trace the will. person who posted it in the first place, right? Yeah. So it's very hard. This it's a huge world. A video or a picture goes viral. All pages starts posting it, and once it's viral, you can't control it. Yeah. You don't, you know, don't know where to go, right? Exactly. So uh, it has very bad consequences. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, anxiety. These are just to name a few. But mean, but you know what we are doing is meanwhile what we are trying to do is that we are discussing, for example, that the victim is actually going through it right now. So what type of fears he or she can develop, and then what type of implications are they going to have on their personality, which probably you know might be helpful to the parents or the family members out there if we share them right now. So let's start with you. Okay, somebody's texting or emailing me every day, or mm -hmm. if you don't do this, I'm going to put this video of yours, you were doing this, and I'm like begging, oh, please don't do that, please don't do that, and this will happen. So that means every now and then, even if I'm sleeping, I'm going to wake up, dude, whether he posted yeah. the picture or the video or not. Mm -hmm. So it's going to get worse day by day. How? And then how do we, how, do, how does our human brain work, and then how do we develop all of this anxiety? Well, again, it's going to like make you go into a it's going to give you low self-esteem. You're going to yeah. lack in your confidence. You won't be able to go out there and openly speak to people. You, you, you tend to isolate yourself. You won't talk to your family members about it and so many other things that you used to do in the past, but now you're not doing it because inside you're afraid of that one person scaring you and scaring the hell out of you and being like, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and blackmailing you. Um, so yeah, it does, it would develop anxiety and give you, like you said, you know, waking up in the middle of the night and yeah. be like, oh my God, what's going to happen now, you know. <laughs> or um, sleep apnea starts happening. Exactly. So, uh, so psychologically speaking, you're going to get panic attacks yeah. after that, right? And um, eventually. Well, and, and I would love if you, you know, if you can define a panic attack as well, because how the people do not even know what a panic attack is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. sure. So panic attack, what really happens in, when you get a panic attack is like you get physiological arousal, mm -hmm. your heartbeat tends to um, rise and up, you get um, hot flushes. Tachycardia. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. You, you, and, well, um, <laughs> you like that more on this? <laughs> so, yeah. So many, many people even think that they're getting a heart attack when, yeah. when they're getting a panic attack, actually. Yeah. So the hot flushes, sweating all over the palms, you know, the face, and that's going on, shortness of breath. Yeah. yeah, very and common, very common. Fear of dying, I would say. Fear of dying, yes. Yeah. So fear that's, of choking, fear of thinking that between. they might die at any time mm -hmm. moment out of this heart attack because yeah. that's what it is apparently is. <laughs> the symptoms are pretty much the same. It's very hard to distinguish. The, the exactly. patients of who get suffer from panic attack, they go to the cardiologist first and then they visit a psychologist mm -hmm. after yeah, getting yeah, the clearance from a cardiologist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, it is a very common phenomenon these days as well because uh, one of the research that I was reading the other day said that by 2020, depression is going to be the biggest killer over here in Pakistan. So I think what we need to do is that we probably need to check our mental health and we, we and there's no harm in going to a clinical psychologist or to somebody who's a psychiatrist as well and sharing all of what you think within your own head because this is what, this is how anxiety acts like. So what happens is, for example, I saw this very funny video last night and it was like, so this was a boxing arena and you know they have these dummies with wheels underneath them so that they can control so one of the boy he was working on the table and the dummy eventually starts to move and this is how anxiety comes so you you look back the dummy's not moving right so, so you're like okay you know everything's fine so this thought is going to come across your head again Absolutely. that the dummy is still moving and the dummy was moving or it might not even be moving so what you know you look again and then you're like dude okay you know mind over matter, mind over matter, but eventually it comes and gets you until unless you're mentally healthy and for that you need to have exercises, different mm -hmm. routine, you know, you, you need to go and sweat out as well, you know, be very energetic about all of these things. Only then you can probably deal with that. But right now we need to go for a short break. Don't go anywhere because when you guys are going to come back, we are going to dig in how fatal can depression, anxiety, post-traumatic disorders can be just because of the fact that you were being bullied 
probably in your childhood or all of those memories are actually coming out of your subconscious because the memory of the subconscious is 90% which I've read and the other is just 10%. Well, we'll definitely ask them whether I'm correct or not. Let's take a break. Good morning. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. For everybody who just got tuned into PTV World, you're watching World This Morning alongside Shazad Khan. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are discussing cyberbullying and cyber harassment and the implications of cyberbullying and cyber harassment on your personality as well. So earlier, we were in conversation with our very amazing psychologist. One is Adil Ali, the other one's Ruma Shahid. And before going towards the break, the, what we were trying to discuss was that, for example, you know, you, you're going through anxiety, you have depression, or it's post-traumatic stress disorder. So what can possibly go wrong if you prolong that and if you do not seek for help? Let's start with you, Ms. Roma. So um, prolonged depression can, um, the worst, in the worst case scenario, it can lead to suicide as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say it. It's harsh, but yeah, that is true. And um, keeping your thoughts to yourself and your mind, not sharing them with anyone, again, leads to so many um, mental health issues as well. So the best thing was can we define these so many mental health issues because you know uh, we are here to sh uh, make people right. aware. So when we say so many, so you know quite a lot of things we just pass by them. So we don't want to pass by them. Let's talk about them. What are those so many things? Stress. Okay. Again, anxiety, depression, PTSD, traumas. Um, those are so many. <laughs> <laughs> those, those are so many. Absolutely. You can't even deal with one all alone. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah and, and then, do do you think that with all of these things, and if they are prolonged, we damage our human organs as well, body organs as well? If we do absolutely. not. Absolutely. You you really? tend to like your brain cells tend to like in prolonged depression. What happens is that your brain cells tend to like, um, uh, what do you call it? Loosen up and start to just damage. I would say and then uh, leading to other neurological disorders and leading to amnesia as well and so other, it can other memories. get worse and worse of course it can yeah okay so um, other sir do you want to add on to this one uh, yes i think 
I think getting treatment at the right time is very important. Okay. The, the younger the disease is, the easier it is to treat. The, right. the better the prognosis. In our terms, we say that the better the prognosis is. If the patient is young, if the disease is young, uh, it's better to. It's easy to treat. Yeah, uh, exactly. The prognosis, the chances of recovery are better again. So I think all of this is valid for all of those disorders. If you know that your kid or any of your loved one is suffering from anything, uh, immediately seek help. As soon as you do that, the chances of recovery will be more. Okay, and do you think that people actually want some help? People want to go to a psychologist or to a psychiatrist to talk to them because we have, I have seen quite a lot of people saying, oh yeah, you know, I just don't know, I'm just sitting and you know, I start to sweat already. And I tell them that, dude, you, you might have some stress. Why don't you go to a psychiatrist or to a psychologist? And then they are like, no, no, you know, uh, we are brave sons and we'll, we are going we to deal it. Ourselves. Yeah, we, we can yeah. do it we ourselves and you know, we have got a very strong will. First of all, how do we get people out of denial? I mean, they deny, they deny, they deny until they die. Absolutely. So I think that's that's a huge. There's a lot of stigma. There's a lot of stigma associated with it. People don't like people suffering from disorders, from yeah. mental health disorders. They call them crazy. So, oh, that man is crazy. He, he he takes some antidepressants. He's absolutely crazy. And he takes some antipsychotics. Oh my God, that's antipsychotics. He's absolutely crazy, mad. So that's what stigmatization is. Uh, in our families, we don't we don't encourage our people, we don't encourage our kids to talk about those things, to discuss them, to seek professional help. Seeing a counselor, what would it do? Nothing. You, you, we go whenever we get uh, sore throat, we go to a doctor, right? Exactly. We get the medicine. <coughs> we get treated. Similarly, if we, but if we, we do have, have a home remedy for that too as well. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> but but uh, at least <laughs> we do something. <laughs> at least we do something. Yeah. At least we do something for it. But for mental health problems, it's purely neglected. We say that okay, that kid in the in our family, he doesn't speak much. But that's how he is. That's how his personality is. We we don't yeah. we don't care right. if he's suffering from some sort of serious psychological problem, psychological condition, and that he, if he gets help, he can bet, he get better. Yeah. So many of our people, many of our people suffer from such things, and uh, they don't get help. And also for our females, I, I would add specifically for our females. Mm -hmm. So for harassment, in, in, in the context of harassment, especially, it's very hard to discuss this with your families. That okay, I was I was harassed by someone on the internet. The blame would automatically come to that that innocent lady, right, who did nothing wrong, but and end, ended up getting uh, getting blamed for everything, for everything that went wrong with her. So uh, I think we our families need to understand this. The parents need to understand this. They need to be they need to be able to have this open conversation with their kids, yeah. where the kids can talk and can speak up about someone who's harassing or bullying or even blackmailing them online. So they should be able to talk about it. They, and Fortunately, we have now the mediums, we have now the, the proper uh, institutes to help those kids, those, those people suffering from this kind of blackmailing and uh, who are the victims of this kind of bullying. So we <coughs> now have the, those things. But and the first part, obviously, I would love to have a minute with all those parents who are out there. The first part, you know, why we say, why the psychologists, the psychiatrists themselves say that, you know, the family is not supportive and then they stay in denial. Now, as a matter of fact, uh, the only reason why the stigma is there. I have seen quite a lot of families who are very liberal as well and you know when the kids actually they go up to them and they say oh father or mother we need I need help in this area it's not the first thing is not a sleeper on his cheek or probably on his head I've seen those families but I have seen those families as well where a kid is actually afraid of going to their parent and the kid might, e might have even thought of it that you know okay what I'm going to do is since it's getting worse and worse, I'm going to go to my father, I'm going to talk to him. But in the morning, he changes his mind because he's had a good night's sleep and he thinks that, you know, I'm going to recover by myself. That's not how it happens, first of all. And the only reason the kid is scared to go to their parents is because their parents are afraid of what the world is going to say about their son or daughter. Do you want to have your son with you for the next whatever years Allah has actually written on his palm or whatever, you know, is, is his fate? Please stop doing that. Please make sure that you are those parents who actually give them the confidence to come and share with us and we're not going to say anything because I've eventually seen that parents are only worried about, oh, well, what is my sister going to say who lives in U.S.? Oh, what is he or she is going to say? Please don't do that, especially with kids. I mean, I know that our parents have even been through these phases and they were clinically or psychologically they were very they were very controlled and they knew how to get out of it and this is what has been happening but i eventually think that just because quite a lot of those people have gone through different types of problems the implications are being faced by kids do you think that this is happening because you just said that you know it can be because of your genes so now Absolutely. how do we how do we talk about this and who's going to answer that are you going to answer that uh, collective yeah. unconscious yeah i mean um
there has to be like a certain parent and child relationship like a closeness in them between yeah. the two so that the child can actually be really realistic about their problems and be yeah. really straightforward and go to their parents and be like oh here this is my problem and you know share everything with them instead of like finding other sources and finding other ways of dealing with their problems like just like you said some people for quick intervention use drugs and stu stuff yeah. like that right so um i think it's there has to be dopamine uh, xanax and i don't know there you go yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> and you know th these are not even these are not those drugs which are actually in common use of boys or men these drugs are in common use by women of pakistan Do you, this is one thing which we which is very alarming so what happens is that people start to taking these sedatives and then they're like, oh, you know, I'm going to sleep. It's just because of the fact when they're about to sleep, you know, they, they get hallucinations. They, they get these ideas where they cannot even stop their brain about thinking whatever they have been thinking. And so then the, what happens is one day they take one Xanax or half or whatever, and then they take dopamine or whatever, or good night sleep, very nice, I felt great the, the next morning. Eventually you get habitual of using it, using it, using it. And then the family members cannot even realize what is happening to our kid, which is very alarming. So first thing which I want to ask is, do you think anybody can be so mentally strong in the first place who says that, you know, I'm, going, I'm not going to go to the doctor, I'm going to sort it out myself? Because the sentiment over here is, if you were able to sort it out yourself, you shouldn't be in that place, first of all, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So absolutely. anybody who, are you going to recommend that, yes, this has been happening to people, they have treated themselves and they're great now? Have you ever seen such an example? See if you, you. Uh, it, it can happen like there are cases where um, you have a strong social support you know you have a strong uh, supporting family with you that you know of is right there for you and they're gonna be there no matter what happens and you can talk to them and share them share your problems with and them and that's what motivates you to you know stray on the track and not to like detract yourself and exactly. go into and you know get doomed and stuff amazing so yeah i mean very positive support social support that. does help but but again having said that having mm -hmm. said that mm -hmm. uh, there are things there are there are disorders that could be severe the kid could be suffering from something that might just not, not only need that emotional support or that family support that's available to him or her, uh, and that may not be enough to help actually. So th at that point, maybe just seeing a psychologist doesn't doesn't shouldn't matter actually. Should no, it? it shouldn't matter at all. You know, this is not what we are saying. But I was yeah. just asking because there is this sentiment within the people that you know I can do it myself. Adil, I mean, I, I'm not going to be very. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to be very open about it. Now, what happens is that over here in Pakistan, you know boys especially yeah. are being uh, nurtured like this or reared like this by their fathers or sheer putter hai or chot nahi lagti ladko ko yeah 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 no, rona nahi hai so that. we do think at times that yeah we we are strong and mm -hmm. then you know there are different things which we over the period of time have overcome all of those fears but i might yes. probably be scared of these lizards and what not but now i'm not i'm like i'm going to shoot you now <laughs> see this is the type of training and this other thing, uh, you were very positive, and I'm glad that somebody's actually said that uh, without thinking of the business they were about to get after the show. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was there was this, uh, there was this uh, social, it, it's not actually a social experiment, but for you know all those mice out there, it might be. So what they did was that they kept three, four mice in one cage, and they kept different drugs, water, and then food. So what the mouse would actually do is that you will go to the drug wala portal and whatever and then sniff a bit or whatever, eat a bit or nibble a bit on it and then go back and then whatever and then come back. So what they did was, okay, let's, wh what we need to do is that we need to keep all of them, you know, hundreds of them in one case. Let's see what their choice will be. So this is about that social support thing. So now what happened, ladies and gentlemen, surprisingly, when the mouse was all alone in a cage, the, it would only go and go nibble on the drugs which were available. But when there were hundreds of them around them, mm -hmm. not even one of the mouse actually went to that portal or nibbled on the drug. So they would go for food, they would go for water, and it's all because of the fact that there were so many other to relate to or to be with or to play with because the toys were there. So this is how social support works. Absolutely. But absolutely. then people, how do, now what you need to do is, so okay, so you have to look into the camera straight and you know, pledge all the parents, please. This is how you need to behave, and then you have to do the same too as sure. well. Let's do it. Go ahead. Okay. Can I start? Yeah, first? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, am I addressing the parents? Over yeah, here? yeah, yeah. Parents. Okay. So first of all, guys, watch out for your kids and be there for them. 
There are people um, who would be in their bedrooms at night crying to have someone to talk to. Don't just leave them alone. And I know there are other um, things going on in the life of their parents as well, but no matter what happens, you have to be there for them. Go check on them, talk to them, develop a certain level of friendship between them, and um, I'm sure things would work out for you and for the well-being of your child. Amazing. Adil's turn now. Okay, sure. Okay, let's move on to Adil Saab over here. Okay, so I think all of the parents out there, uh, I think one of the things that you need to do, Roma did a fantastic job of telling um, the main things. Uh, I think one important thing that you need to do, you need to give a lot of attention to your kid. Your kid deserves all of your attention. If you're doing something important, if you're doing, if you're busy in something, but if your kid comes to you, talk to him, listen to him, uh, see what he has to share. Because if you won't uh, give him or her the attention that he or she needs, then his or she is going to go outside the home and find that attention yeah. in the form of girlfriends. You know, the, the young affairs are very common these days. And th I think the main reason is because they're not getting enough support from their own families. They, they don't have enough people to listen to them at their home. And that's why they, they're seeking those friendships and those, uh, they get into bad companies because of it. The drug yeah. abuse all starts because of it, because they no, don't get enough support from their own family. So parents, watch out for it. Thank you very much. Very amazing messages from all of our, uh, from both of our clinical psychology. But there's one thing which I need to ask, and that is be very honest about it. So, uh, you know, throughout our childhood, the only therapy we got was chappal therapy or thappar <laughs> therapy. Do you think it works? Uh, I, think, I think it's a form of reinforcement. Again, punishment. Yeah. Uh, it works. It works. It works. Scientifically proven works. Don't don't constitute now and then, yeah. Don't <laughs> constitute abuse. <laughs> All right. But yeah, a little bit of punishment that's that's important. That's okay, important yeah. that <laughs> to is, keep the kids functioning important. actually. Well thank you very much for saying that. Thank you very much for being very honest guests as well. You know, it was lovely to have you guys. But ladies and gentlemen, before wrapping it up, I, I think I'm going to give a message to all those kids who are out there. You know you guys are pain. <laughs> and when, when you're at the age of 15, 16 or 17, when you want your rights to drive a car, even though you're not legally allowed your father, they give you out of love, whatever you want, these tablets, these cell phones, might, you might not even fall in the same age category where you were supposed to actually have it, but they did it for you because you wanted it. Now, it is, I mean, it's hard to believe that how can you guys be at this age and are very insane about your life decisions? This is not how it is. A 15-year-old or a 16-year-old can actually make their life decisions even if they're not permitted legally, but they do have their thought processes. And with, you know, by, by communicating with your parents and asking for different advices, I think you can do a great job. But when it comes down to you being stuck in a position, I think the kids, they do tend to blackmail their parents too as well. And we need to be very... Uh, I think we need to keep a check on them. Why do they do it? Because I have seen different kids when they have money, or oh, they're all happy. As soon as they do not have money, they lock themselves into the room, not eat any food. I mean, the behavior should be same over the period of time, whether you had money or you're not. Even if you're stressed or even if you've got anxiety, that does not have to do anything with money or belongings or materialism. Absolutely. Am I correct or wrong? If it was so, then all the poor would have been psychologically ill. Exactly. If it was so, if it was, if it was just the money that would buy the psychological well-being, yeah. then all the poor would have been exactly. mentally ill. Thank you very much for being with us. It was lovely to have you. And for all those parents out there, please make sure that you keep a check on the browsing history of your kids because this will help you who your kids are talking to and you might not actually fall into a situation uh, where you actually have to take your kid to a psychologist or to whoever, to whatever happens. And the rescue helpline is 9911. So, you know, if you think that you have got such a thing going on and your kid is isolating him or herself, please make sure that you call the helpline. That would be great. So the hotline number is going to be on the television screens. It is 0800-39393. And it's for all those people who are getting, um, you know, for example, somebody is bullying you or harassing you over the internet. These are the numbers to contact and it will be sorted. So for all those lizards who are weeping onto your personal pictures or profiles or whatnot, do, they are going to be behind the bars very soon. Do not forget to write to us on our Facebook fan page, which is with the name of World This Morning. On Twitter, it's World This Morning without a G. On Daily Motion, it's YouTube, it's World This Morning. And well, this morning, the Fabulous Repeat is going to be at 5 past 11 p.m. I think uh, what I'm going to do is as soon as I leave the studio, I'm going to get preparing for the 14th August celebrations. Uh -huh. 70 years, Pakistan, Zindabad. Good morning. Thank you very much.